How's it going guys? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you how you can use React, TypeScript and CSS modules to build this digital clock. Now, as you might see very shortly, it's going to update live as time goes on and it's a good project if you're learning React. We're going to be uh, taking advantage of use effect, uh, custom hooks as well as some state changes. Okay, now going inside this tab right here, this here is an existing uh, project template that I've got set up. If you need to set up a new React project from scratch, I've got a video dedicated to doing that. And once that is done, we can head inside here and create a new directory for our custom hook. We're going to say hooks right here. Now, the hook we need is going to be to give us a constantly updating live current timestamp. Okay, so we'll say a new file and say use live date.ts. Okay, in here we're going to export our custom hook. We'll say export const use live date. Okay, this hook here is going to take in no parameters or no arguments. Okay, and within here we're going to be returning a date object. Okay, the reason why we're returning a date object is because that date object is going to represent the current point in time. And we're going to be using uh, a future component, a clock component, to then take that time and then simply uh, format it as it wishes. Okay, so within here, we're going to say const, then use array brackets. We'll say now, then set now equal to use state, and then we'll say new date just like this. So our current time is the initial value for this bit of state here. Then we can simply return now from this hook. Okay, let's stop here and test it out. If I go back inside the app.tsx, I can say const uh, now equal to use live date. Okay, then simply render out that to the browser. We'll say here, now dot to string just like this i'll save this go back in the browser here we can see we do in fact get that time being rendered out on the screen so the hook is functional in that it returns a date object now how do we update the date every second this here is going to be achieved using use effect because our effect is going to be the usage of set interval. So if you've used set interval before, you know in JavaScript this function lets you perform an action every x amount of milliseconds. Okay, so it's going to look something like this. We're going to say use effect. Okay, then within here, the effect is going to be in this arrow function. But we're going to provide an empty array to the dependency list because we want this effect to only run once. Okay, that's done using an empty array right here. Then within this arrow function, what are we going to do? Well, of course, we're going to be calling set interval. Let's say const interval is equal to, then of course, call set interval here. And every 1000 milliseconds, okay, this code is going to run. What is this code going to do? Well, it's going to update the date or the now state. We'll say set now, then simply call new date once again. All right. So now we have this code running every second, which means, of course, our date in here is going to be updated and rendered it out every second. Now, one last thing to do here is going to be to clear the timeout sorry, clear the interval in the cleanup function. Okay, so we're going to return from use effect here, the use effect uh, function, and we're going to say simply just clear interval and pass the interval ID in. This just means that any components using this hook, when they get unmounted, we're going to clear the interval so that we don't keep trying to uh, set the date every second after it's not even being used anymore. So we have the code completed inside this custom hook. If I save this, go back in the browser here, I'll refresh. And of course, we get the current date and time being updated uh, as we go. Okay. So the main part of the code here, the logic is completed. 
Now it's just gonna be about using this date in a custom component. So let's clear out this and make a new directory in here called clock, okay? With two files, a component file, so clock.tsx and a CSS module file, clock.module.css, okay? Within the clock file, what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to simply uh, say export const clock to export a new React component here. And within here, uh, we're going to, uh, of course, utilize that hook, all right? We're gonna say const now equal to use live date, just like we did for the main app file, okay? Then down here, I'm just gonna return a div, all right? We'll say div, then simply output now.toString again, just like we did inside this file here. So we have our component structure there. If I go back inside the app.tsx, let's just simply remove this code and then return a simple render of that clock component just like this instead, okay? If I save this, go back in the browser, refresh, we get the exact same results. But of course, this time we're inside that clock component. All right, so we have the date object and it's gonna update every second. Let's now extract the different parts of the date. As you've seen in my example, you've got the current hour, the minutes and the AM or PM. So for this, if I go back inside here now, how do we get those parts? Well, let's declare a new constant for each one. We'll say const hour is equal to, now for the hour part, it needs to be in 12 hour time. Well, it doesn't need to be, but in my example here, it's in 12 hour time. So how do we get the 12 hour version of the current hour? Well, we're gonna say now.get hours, okay? Then say mod 12 or 12, okay? So this hours gives you the current hours between zero and 23, okay? Doing mod 12 is gonna take, for example, 13 and give you one. So it converts your 24 hour into your 12 hour. But the issue is if you run this on a 12, so 12 mod 12 gives you zero, okay? So you need to say or 12 to convert your 12 p.m. into actually 12 p.m., if that makes sense, okay? So let's just render out this hour so we can see how it works. I'll save this back in the browser and we get six right there. It is currently 6 p.m. or 18 uh, in my current time zone. Now, we have the hour. We now need to just simply pad the start of it. So convert six into 06. To do this, let's wrap this into brackets, then just say dot two string. Then we're gonna say here, dot pad start two and then zero. Let me get rid of this here. So it's bigger, there we go. Here is just saying, look, let's take this number, convert it into a string. So then now we can, we can call pad start on it, which is going to guarantee at least two characters in your string, then fill up any remainder with zero. So six turns into zero six. And of course, for example, 10 remains at 10, one zero. So now save this back in the browser, we get 06 right there, okay? Let's do a similar thing for the minutes. We'll say const minute is equal to now.getMinutes, all right? Then say dot two string, again, dot pad start, then say two and then zero, all right? Of course, minutes here doesn't need the 12 hour conversion, so we can just call get minutes, all right? And we pad it there. Then lastly, we're gonna get the AM or PM, Okay, equal to, it's gonna say now.getHours, if your current hours is less than 12, you're in AM, otherwise you're in PM, pretty straightforward. So a question mark there is gonna do, uh, do us fine. And now we have the hour, minute, and AM, PM. Let's say hour, then say colon, then say uh, minutes, then say uh, space, then AM, and then PM, just like this. I'll save this back in the browser here, and we get 6, 16 PM, fantastic. All right, so now it's all gonna be about styling this into this here. Now, we are gonna be using Google Fonts for this, okay, to get this font. I'll leave that to the end. 
So let's work on the CSS. Going back inside here, we're gonna go inside our module file and we're gonna declare a new class called clock. Very straightforward. In this class, we're gonna do a couple of things. Firstly, we're gonna set the width of the clock to be fit content. In other words, whatever the width is of the, uh, of the container based on this particular value here or the content, that's gonna be the width of your div, all right? It's gonna shrink it down to just be enough to fit in this content. From there, we're gonna say padding at uh, 0.25 EM and 0.5 EM. EM means the current font size. So 0.5 refers to half of the current font size. Speaking of the current font size, we're gonna say font size of 60 pixels, okay? A background of a very dark gray, so 111, and a text color of a green, so 39FF14. And lastly, a font family of sans serif. Of course, we're gonna change this very shortly to this digital looking font, okay? But now, we have the CSS declared for the clock. How do we then use this class inside the React component? Well, we need to import the styles using CSS modules. Up here, okay, we're gonna say import styles from, then say dot forward slash clock dot module dot CSS. Now, this project here with Vite is going to automatically have support for CSS modules. So this means with this styles uh, import, if I go down to my div here, I can just say class name, then say is equal to styles.clock. So referring to the clock right here. If I save this, go back in the browser, we have the CSS applied right there. And if I inspect this, you will see that there is a class name right here, which is of course given to us by that CSS module and everything's working perfectly fine. The last step now is gonna be to have that custom font included so we're gonna be using Google Fonts to achieve this. Go to fonts.google.com and do a search for any font you want really, but I'm gonna be using a font called Orbitron. So O-R-B-I-T-R-O-N, uh, there we go. This one right here, I'll click this, then I can use get font up here and say get the embed code, I'll click this. You wanna copy this right here and paste it in the head of your HTML. Copy this back inside here, open up the index.html file and then simply paste this inside the head, okay? So now we can reference the font in CSS. There are instructions right here, um, or they used to be here. Uh, that's okay, maybe they're somewhere else, I'm just not seeing it here. Oh, here we go, so font family, Orbitron. So copy this here, go back inside VS Code, then we do this, save this, back in the browser here and we have that font set and we're done with the digital clock. That is how to build this digital clock using React, TypeScript and CSS modules. If this video helped you out, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to Decode and here is another video.